All right, folks, Travis Brown, Submissions and Slashers, Horror Movies Uncut. I am uh, joined today by Miss Anique Blanc. Do not say the C, because she is French, okay? We don't say the C. <laughs> and we are talking about a film that is making a premiere this uh, on the 9th, I believe, down here at South by Southwest, and that is for the film Hunting Days. Now, I must say, first and foremost, right off the bat, this is probably going to be, in regards to genre films, the most all over the board genre film you might see at this entire festival. <laughs> so, Anik, it it really like makes me start right off the bat asking you about your childhood, your upbringing, um, where you're kind of from, and then also, is there any films in particular like that kind of serve as like a muse? for a movie like Hunting Days for you? Well, that's a big question. Um, well, I think life served more as a muse for this movie. I okay. mean, of course, in, in the aesthetic of it all, and like, uh, I'm a big uh, movie fan. Uh, I was inspired by uh, by many uh, horror film, being it The Shining, being it uh, like uh, any cabin fever movie you can think of okay. was, uh, of course, part of the aesthetic there. Okay. Uh, now, are you from Canada or are you from, Fr where are you my, from? My parents, my parents are from France and I was right. born in Canada. Okay. Okay. And uh, basically, the but, but more the story, the, the will to do this film was just more me seeing how we navigate this life uh, while blinding ourselves to whatever is going on and continuing to party and to live our life like that yeah. and to want to kind of... Uh, challenge that way of doing and showing in a cathartic way if we continue to live this party without like noticing what we're doing or what is going on next to us where we could end up how we could end up so that i think that was a uh, one of the strong uh, thing that kind of uh, made me want to do this movie and also okay. i want to see a strong woman yeah. face a bunch of uh, toxic masculinity yeah. uh, <laughs> right, you know, and win over them and uh, and that was something I needed to see because I, I, I am proud about the Me Too movement and about all the contestation uh, movements right now, the Black Lives Matters movement, all those movements, uh, I think right. they are important. But I wanted also to show um, a strong character there that would kind of uh, burn down this world, you know? That's right. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I mean, so it, 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 it leads to a great question about our star, Nina uh, Nahima uh, Rishi. <clears throat> How did you know that she was the person that could pull off this role? Was it something about her that you seen before? Or was it just during auditions that you were like, OK, for the role? Because this role is so important for hunting days. How did you know that that's that's my person right there? That's my Nina. It's so funny you ask that because we actually did know their her agent because she had done a few films before where she was more in the victim position, right? Mm -hmm. And in a tomboy position, never playing with sensuality or being that strong. And uh, and her agent proposed to her five times, I think. And we said, no, no, we're really looking for something else. And we saw <laughs> everybody else in Montreal. We did a very big uh, audition process. I also wanted at first to work with a non-actor but for such an uh, important role, I think it was a little bit too much of a stretch or I didn't meet the right person for that. And then at the end, I was like, ah, oh, this, we didn't see her. And I called, I know um, somebody she knows, and I was like, do you think she'd be interested in doing something like that? And she was like, that's all she want to do. Oh. She's tired to be the victim. She wants yeah. to be the one shaking the world. And then we saw her in the audition. And she had changed her appearance because she's more tomboy, and she had put uh, those big loop earrings and those short shorts and all that. And we and she now had long hair because in her last movie she had shaved hair, right? So it was yep. just completely different. And she started to do the audition, and we're like, we were so dumb not even to see her before. And it was kind of clear at that moment, yeah, because she has that strength and that anger. Mm -hmm. But also, she's so captivating and you kind of want to be her friend. So she had mm -hmm. this uh, really uh, two sides to her that was really important for the character. 
Yeah, and honestly, I think it also shows how much she's able to play off of the guys in the group because you know they all <laughs> it's like they all could be one character in sometimes you know because i feel like that's just how we men are at times we all could just be one character uh so talk about like on the set when you're with this group and there's so many moments that i think people are gonna really enjoy for the film when they see the interaction with her and the guys like, were they able to kind of improvise a little bit of some of the stuff? Or did you kind of have, hey, I really want it to be this particular way? How was the vibe when you guys were shooting, especially all those great scenes that you guys had with everybody together? That was crazy. They're all very long scenes. I think there's like 29 scenes in this movie, right? It's uh, it's like all the scenes are 10 minutes long. They're all intense. Yeah. There is no scene <laughs> reaction. It was always a joke at the start of the day. Everybody would come and, and say, another little relaxed day, you know, because there was always something, something burning, some water, some actors crying, some blood, some like animals. There was every day. Uh, and like uh, to direct 10 minute scenes they kind of needed often because they were so intense to do the whole scene right yeah and like I would like just watch them go and like in, I would couldn't write notes so after two minutes I had forgotten half of my notes so then like the next time I'm trying to get the rest of my notes but they were they kind of owned the character so all the takes mm -hmm. were still good but I was trying to add just a little bit but it was very very tough I was a uh, one year I had had a baby, so I still had mom brain. You got mom no brain, brain, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> so I was trying to direct seven actors and wow. them going everywhere. So the only way I could do it was to only look at the monitor so that to not notice about what the other one were doing because they were living the scenes, right? Yeah. All around. So I had to like look, concentrate on what I see and go. And they 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 were really good. They were also very gentlemen with one another. Like if we left little room to improvisation, okay. But like we didn't want it because if seven actors improvise, then it becomes it, a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. But when one would find the right joke to add, they would let him at the moment, and the next scene, the other guy would let him. That's add great. So they were really a good pack, but they became really uh, they became kind of like in the movie. They really became close. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Hunting Days is uh, a film that. Down in South by Southwest, I think it's going to be like one of the perfect places for a film like this to be seen because it has always been a festival for creation and uh, for creativity and for kind of whimsical, fantasy driven types of films. So when we are introduced to Nambi and Yai and we start to kind of see what's going on with the rest of the film. It's Hunting Days really has a lot of different layers to this movie where it's almost like you're watching a play, in a sense. Um, tell me what type of challenges did you run into yourself when you were trying to piece all this together? Because even for a person that watches as many films as we do, like I know I'm going to have to watch this movie again because there's just so much I know I missed the first couple times. So. Like uh, any challenges in regards to the writing that you really ran into. Uh, and I really appreciate your time. This has been fantastic. I'm really going to kind of lead you with this question and one more to wrap up. But is there any challenges like that were really hitting you when you were trying to piece together how to really wrap up this film with all it, all the different layers that it entailed? I think the biggest challenge was myself because uh, sometimes, right, you have you stick to an idea. And for me, it was important that in the second act, nothing happened. And they were kind of, because it was about inertia, right, for me also, this movie. Those guys face so much and they do nothing. But, and then I think I fought with this idea for like five years, but everybody was telling me nothing happened in the second act, nothing happened in the second act. And then at some point I was like, I just watched the movie where... I watched too many movies where nothing happened in the sec second act. I was like, yeah, if you don't know how bad it's going to go, it can be boring. Mm -hmm. And then that's the moment I accepted to like really shake up my second act of the film, <laughs> the 30 minutes in the mi middle. And then it all fell through, like all the the little problem. I was like, I knew uh, I wanted to use them to face nature. So I was often thinking... Uh, how can I uh, use nature? We were supposed mm -hmm. to shoot in a lake. We couldn't. Mm -hmm. It was too expensive. So I was like, maybe the water can come from the sky. So I mm -hmm. kind of tried to always just keep open to like the challenges, except that one challenge that I fought for against for too long. But then when I let that go, it went really well. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Annika, what is one thing you would love for people to take away from Hunting Days after they see the film, Annika? I think I wanted to stick with them and to kind of uh, reveal itself to them slowly. As you say, there's many layer. It's kind of a fable. Could you say fable? Mm -hmm. For sure, yes. Yep, yep. And like, um, because I think they can look like the bad guys, but like, I think they're also close to us. And Mm -hmm. like, I think that's what the film wants you to, to, to realize. Are you sometimes too much letting yourself lead it by a group or are you sometimes the bad leader of a group how can we as a society do better you know and keep our individuality because i really do think that most human when they're alone are fantastic and are full of empathy and like can really change the world but when we become a mass that's when we stop thinking sometimes or we kind of let the others we say they're gonna fix it but we need to fix it all of us you know so i think that's what i want to stick that's right. Let's fix it. And we got <laughs> Enic Blanc to make sure we're getting it done the right way. Lady, thank you so much. I love the voice. I love the passion. I love the spirit behind you as a person as well. I can't wait to see more coming from you. So please keep us posted on anything coming your way. I really, really hope people get a good appreciation from the film. We'll have our review up later for you to see it as well. Thank you so much for your time, Anik. We look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.